my channel Porsche Mind Mechanics this is video number two of my every Thursday a new listing by 10 a.m. what a challenge in this video we are refitting the sump plate and the oil filter uh, finishing off underneath and putting the new oil and my additive in the system let's get underway Okay, apologies for the noise, but I'm just cleaning up the face of the sump plate with uh, a brand new, decent Stanley blade. Uh, you're right on top of my garage heater, unfortunately. important to keep it perfectly square on the face so that you don't put marks in the alloy. And that, I've been around the sump on the car. Try and get as much of the blade on the metal as you can and then that way you'll be able to keep it straighter and you won't find it wants to catch. And that, my friends, is it. There's all this stuff here that I'm going to wash. I'll run a bit of clutch brake cleaning over it. And, uh, ready just to uh, put it back with um, my Rebond uh, German number which is the uh, that's the Porsche number there if you want that uh, that's uh, design 911 right let's put the sump back in the car and that's after a thorough blasting out with some clutch and brake cleaner to make sure there's nothing loose in there, no debris of any kind. I'm gonna run a bead of the sealer around the collar uh, and hopefully get it back in the car next. All right, here we are on sump replacement. Uh, you might just be able to make out that I have run my bead of sealant around the sump plate and I am ready, well actually, if I brought the bolts with me I would have been out ready, hang on a second. bolts we'll be able to do the job properly yeah. the lights getting a bit rough so we'll try and do uh, what we can uh, right now then no one no one that's not a good thing to do is it right I cleaned out the strainer there's a circlip around here uh, which removes this little rubber gator whatever it is you can't really get the gauze out but I had a pick around couldn't find anything untoward in there so it looks like I got the thickness the thick of it out earlier now gently putting the sump back like that I don't want to move it around too much because obviously that is spreading the bead of sealant around get a couple of bolts in it i.e. like that I'm not gonna and then you're 
up with your uh, E10. Just going to gently pull those up. I've kind of got one here and one. No, oh, I've got two there. All right, I thought I only had one in that end. Nice and evenly. Um, the instructions for this say to tighten them up to five bar, which is nothing at all really, but still five bars, five bar. So I'm just putting them all in. They're just taking the weight at the moment. Must admit the old cleaner, you know, I'm sure a shop last would have been a better job. Um, but the cleaner, done a good job on that sun plate. I'm quite pleased with that. I don't think I'm gonna put any oil in it today because the day's running out and it's starting to get dark. Uh, you, I've, If I remember rightly, the sealant, this stuff uh, reacts with oil. So uh, you can pretty much put the oil in it straight away. Uh, it speeds up the curing process. It won't prevent it. Oh, hang on, there's a bit of crud around that one. But still, yeah. God. I have the oil filter now as well. I might get that in. be your biggest nightmare doing this with a sealant because obviously if it goes back and it is leaking you'll take it all off again and drain all the oil out of it but still I think we'll be all right I haven't gone mad with it less is more and it's important as long as you clean your faces up correctly oh, that one's not in there. clean your faces up that will be half your bowel and I'm going to do them up in a much of a fashion that you do a head up uh, in that, you know, you start in the middle, fundamentally. What's going on here? That's it. Pull them down in the middle and work your way out in a crisscrossy sort of fashion. tend to do with silicon if I've got the time to do it which I will have today is I'm not going to pull it right down tonight I'm going to leave it till tomorrow and then I'll pull it down final I've always done silicon that way if I've got the opportunity so I'm just doing them up all the same roughly by hand. There's not a lot on them at the minute, but they're tight.
and I can't really see, actually I can just see a little bit of ceiling around the outer edge, which is nice. And I think, yeah, you can just make out up the top there, the white has a perfect little bead all the way around there. That's beautiful. I'm very impressed with that job, Mr. Dawson. Lovely. Okay, sump back. Let's do the oil filter. Right, oil filter. We're using uh, a man. I wouldn't use anything else, to be honest. Uh, that's an HU719 stroke five. Quite a generic German filter, to be honest. That's the new element uh, there. No top and bottom to them. That's interesting. Back home, sorry. And I've put my new O-ring uh, around my oil filter cover and a little drop of oil around that just to help it seal. I thought that filter wasn't gonna fit in there for a minute. I'm like, what, what, what? I'm doing it up hand tight. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of And we're there. Job done. Like I say, tomorrow I shall nip these up finally on the sump and put some oil in it. Finally, it's time to get the oil back in the car. Again, apologies for the noise. We're right on top of my heater. What I'm doing, I've got my two five litre um, Mobile Ones sitting here. What I've already done is I have put a couple of litres of this one already in the car. And you can just make out, we're looking at three litres in that one. That one there is full. And over here, I've got my Lucas um, additive simmering away nicely it's like treacle uh, it's good to warm it up it's only about eight degrees outside so I'll get it nice and warm and what I will do I will add those bottles to this can of oil which is nice and warm as well from the diesel heater uh, and give it a good mix up so when I put it in the car it's already thinned out and mixed up with the oil Hence preventing that solid lump when it's very cold on the initial start in the bottom of the car. Right, time to put the first one in. Everything's lovely and warm. And there you go. It doesn't flow like that normally, I can tell you. It does make a huge difference warming it up. Bearing in mind the car's been drained down for quite a while now, so it's important that we get that oil around the system as quick as we possibly can. That's the first one. I'll let that drain for a little bit and we'll put the uh, second one in as well. It's liquid gold, we don't want to waste it. I tend to drain out the last dregs and keep it for lubricating stuff, like nuts and bolts and what have you. O-rings, that sort of thing, it's all good stuff. But yeah, that's the, that's the one I'm, that's my chosen poison. 
probably be the last time this year because I'm definitely going to go over, I think, to Miller's 1050 by the sound of it. Looks like a good option to me, in which case I won't bother anymore with the additive. And in terms of cost, uh, they work out the same. You know, by the time you spent, what, 35 quid on two of these, um, it's the same price as two gallon of, of um, Miller's. So, yeah, way forward. Right, let's get the second one in. Just giving it a shake up. I've put my uh, funnel in, I've raised up the filler a little bit, sat it underneath a bit of tissue just to help a good angle for flow. And I've got a little bungee strap around the handle on the back of my funnel to stop it sliding. Here's my lovely loop, my lovely warm um, mixed Mobile One and Lucas additive uh, just going to pour that in nice and slowly so it gets all the way down this will then give me four seven liters in total I imagine it's going to need a couple more liters of top up This is going in, this is nice and thin. Just don't do it too quickly, otherwise you might find it will leak out of here, it'll breathe back. shake for luck. Right, and I'm now going to give it about a litre of my remaining bottle. Uh, so I'll take it down to four. Pretty good guess. Down to four it is. That gives me now, lost the plot already, um, four, five, six, three, four, five, 
I've lost count what I've lost where I'm at. So I've done four, six, that's probably that's seven litres. God, help me out, Sunday afternoon, isn't it? Right, now we're gonna run the car up quickly and see where we're at. Right, I've put eight litres in it so far. Let's get a reading. Right, it's reading full. I'm gonna fire it up. to operate in temperature the idles drop down um, but I'm just having a little look underneath here for any sign of leaks etc the sump cover so far looks all good um, you can just make out the overspill on the outside with that bead around there but yeah we've got nothing uh, to indicate any issues so I'm gonna to have to wait now about half an hour to get a new oil reading and then we'll see how we've done okay she's been standing a good half an hour now so let's just see what we've got in terms of oil I have put in over just over seven liters whoa look at that it's on the minimum Okay, so it's probably going to want about three litres to bring that back up to spec. So let's top that up now. And a final check. This will take her up to, what, nine litres? Um, bang on top. Lovely. Okay. What I will do is I'll recheck that again. Because um, looking at my can, that works out about spot on because... Normally, I have about a litre left uh, out of two cans. And what with the two litres that I've added in terms of the additive, that's this one and that one, we're about spot on. Maybe I'll put a little bit more in, maybe not. But still, I'll give it another later on uh, once I've had the car around the block for a little bit of a run. But for now... Okay, before we wrap up, just a couple of bits of feedback on uh, some of the comments uh, that I've been getting recently. Um, PJ uh, made a note or a point of saying that he wasn't keen uh, on my startup routine. Now, I know it sounds scary and I might be barking up the wrong tree completely. I really don't know. But... I generally do that only when the car has been laying up for a long period of time, like a month or so at a time. And I've just got this crazy little thing going on in my head where it says to me, if it's been sitting there, pretty much all that oil sitting in the sump. If I fire it up for uh, a minute, let's say, giving enough time for enough oil to get thrown up to the top of the engine, and then I switch it off again, I allow it to naturally run around the various bits and pieces through its channels. Hence, uh, while the engine's not running, it's not doing it any harm. You know, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Um, I just feel better doing it. That's all I can really say, uh, PJ. So, um, I don't know what to say, but your point, I do get where you're coming from. Yeah, you think, yeah, I know the whole startup procedure uh, with the flat six on the 996 and the 997 is ideally it's start it up and get out there, get the revs, keep the revs down low and get it warm. 
and the quickest way to get that engine warm is of course under load idling sitting there warming it up is not a good idea uh, and something that should be avoided at all costs and i have also pointed out i think uh, that i have a issue with when i get my car out of my workshop i've got to back it out of the workshop i've then got a you know that's about 30 feet i've got to stop i've got to lock the workshop up then i've got to back it out another 30 odd feet out of my gates then i've got to lock my gates do my bollards etc etc i did say bollards um all that you know might take me five minutes six minutes which is all time the car's sitting there idling i don't want to switch it off i don't want to keep stop starting it because we all know it's not a great idea but still i do what i think's best um and i hope that with the additives etc etc that uh you know i'm doing the best i can and to be fair fingers crossed i don't have any issues that i'm aware of at the moment I know we've spoke uh, about buying or talking about bore scoring and stuff like that, and I am going to get myself a bore scope very, very soon, and I look forward to probably be a winter project for me for that one, maybe in the autumn, but I look forward to uh, giving me car an endoscopy and having a proper look to satisfy uh, my curiosity and quite possibly yours. Um, Tom Wilkin, he thinks that my exhaust sound quite noisy uh in relation to oem and basically uh i think he had a look through an, an earlier video that i did where i removed i was removed last year when i took all the exhaust system off and he's actually discovered for me that i have the gundo hack now i didn't know that um and i checked it out and there's a little picture of it coming up now now uh, that's where they put a little bit of pipe in between the muffler and the exhaust pipe I believe uh, it's quite a common thing that can be done on these cars um, I don't know what it does for them but yeah I, I have noticed that there are a lot of 997s don't sound quite like mine but I love how it sounds don't get me wrong it's gorgeous so well done to you uh, Tom in um, highlighting the fact that I actually have a non-standard exhaust system. So I'm quite pleased about that. Very good news. Okay, Mike Frankie, he always uh, apparently has wanted to take his sump off. Now we've all got our problems in life, Mike, but you know, that's not a bad one. So I reckon go for it and get that sump off. Now he runs his car on uh, Miller's 1050. I'd like to know, Mike, actually, which one you use, because I have had a little look at Miller's and discovered there are two, uh, is there an NT? I'm not quite sure. There's two types of Miller, and uh, I just wondered which one you were running, because that will probably be my poison of choice uh, for next season. And he's getting about two bar on a hot idle with that 1050. Now, I think I'm achieving a little bit more than that, but I'll do another check on that once I get the car back on the road uh, next month. And I think that's about it. I don't believe. Oh, Dan's McShane. Just a quick one from Dan's McShane. Um, he is from Paisley in Scotland. And he said, in returns to the bore scoring video, uh, he said it's also worth pointing out keeping those radiators. It's all about, at the end of the day, it's all about temperature. And if you can keep that temperature down in the car, then, you know, all those things are beneficial to wear and tear. And he brought out the, he, he raised the point about keeping the front rads clean. Uh, I do do that. I have the two front rads and I also have the additional centre rad, which I fitted when I first got the car. Uh, I've also uh, put in the lower temperature stat as well. Don't really notice a huge amount of difference on the gauges. But um, technically, I think it's 74, the lower temperature stat. And the, um, the middle rad, the centre rad generally only ever got fitted standard to the turbos. They never put it on the Carrera 4Ss. So I put that in. That was a Porsche kit that I actually got that free of charge. So I was quite happy I come across that. Um, 
so yeah i'm hoping i'm doing my bit in terms of keeping temperatures down and stuff like that and apparently i i read somewhere that the only reason that porsche fitted the high temperature stat was for it enable to enable the car to meet its emissions um obviously the hotter the oil the hotter the engine the better the burn so that's probably why uh they ran with that but you know technically it was detrimental to the car in terms of we want to keep that temperature down a little bit if we can right that's it for now let's wrap this one up and uh get ready for the next one that's just about it for uh oil change and uh filter and sump etc thanks for watching like and subscribe keep on trucking see you later bye